The next region to be mapped is the septal area. The reconstruction of this area is difficult when using the standard manual approach. This problem can be overcome by the use of the magnetic catheter, which being adherent allows very rapid acquisition of several points, giving the possibility of an accurate reconstruction of this region. The last region to be mapped is the mitral valve area. The reconstruction of the mitral valve is difficult when using the standard manual approach since the movement of the leaflets greatly limits the acquisition of the points of the annulus. With the stereotaxi system you can perform a manual mapping as shown previously. Alternatively, a rapid auto-mapping of the left atrium, but not of the pulmonary veins, can be performed. The pulmonary veins can be mapped either manually or by using a preset selection button, but not by using the auto-mapping. This is due to the fact that the maximum and minimum movement of the catheter were set up initially based on the left atrial chamber only. The mapping can be remotely guided by the operator or it can be automatically obtained by the auto-mapping system by continuously pressing the auto-navigate button. The auto-mapping system allows a detailed reconstruction of the left atrium as programmed by the stereotaxis system. The system is programmed to navigate different areas of the left atrium in a standard sequence. In fact, the magnetic catheter, once the auto-mapping has been turned on, is allowed to move itself within the range initially programmed by the setup system which is applicable for the atrial wall mapping. To reach a single pulmonary vein, in most cases, it is sufficient to select the preset function on the navigant screen for each pulmonary vein. If a pulmonary vein cannot be rapidly reached in this way, the operator can remotely guide the magnetic catheter to reach these sites. Unlike manually mapped atria, the auto-mapping system allows to reach every site of the atrium, even the most challenging ones such as the ridge, the left atrial appendage, the mitral isthmus and the septal region. These results in a uniformly accurate acquisition of the left atrial anatomy, which is fundamental step in the ablative strategy of atrial fibrillation. In particular, the catheter adheres softly on the atrial wall and is dragged along the endocardial surface without being pushed against it, avoiding the volume overestimation that's a typical pitfall of the manual approach with standard catheters. As the mapping process is completed, the ablation phase may start.
The ablation procedure is entirely performed remotely by the operator, without the use of any automatic settings. The radio frequency applications, shown with the red dots on the Carter screen, are initially performed on the mitralismus according to our modified strategy. You can see a point-by-point -point radio frequency application starting at the mitral annulus towards the left inferior pulmonary vein. The left inferior pulmonary veins are represented in violet. The radio frequency applications are of short duration and are associated with a complete abatement of atrial electrograms. The lesions are linear and continuous due to the catheter stability as shown on the flora image on the top left panel. The Carter screen also shows the surface electrocardiogram, bipolar intracardiac electrograms recorded by the ablation catheter at the proximal and distal sites. This is important so that the operator can check the potential abatement during and after the radio frequency applications. On the right of the intracardiac recordings, there is a window showing the continuous monitoring of impedance, temperature and radio frequency power. Circumferential pulmonary vein ablation is performed with a target temperature of 65 degrees Celsius and the power limits of 50 watts. These values can be varied based on the area of the atrium that is being ablated. The left inferior pulmonary vein was reached. The left superior pulmonary vein shown in red was removed in order to allow the operator to see better the area around it. The stability of the catheter can be checked on the fluoro, where we can also see minimal movements of the catheter induced by the operator. The procedure is followed simultaneously on the carto, where by constant rotation it is possible to apply contiguous ablations even in challenging points. We tailor circumferential lesions according to the single patient's anatomy and physiology if vagal reflexes are elicited which may vary between different subjects. In some patients, encircled areas can be larger, varying between 20 and 30% of the left atrium, mainly depending on the atrial dimensions, which are usually larger in patients with long-lasting, persistent or permanent atrial fibrillation. In addition, more radio frequency applications are used particularly around the left superior pulmonary vein where atrial electrogram potentials may be difficult to eliminate within a few seconds. In such cases, we prefer to deliver repeated radio frequency applications of short duration instead of a single radio frequency application of a duration greater than one minute to avoid the risk of cardiac perforation.